Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I am just glad to be in the house of the Lord today. And no place I'd rather be. A lot of places I could have ended up, but I'm glad I'm here today. Amen. 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 I honor your pastor and his family today. Like he said, we we just met right up here uh, just about an hour ago. But uh, I echo what he said, and I feel very, very good today. My spirit is overflowing. I'm full of expectation. And like I said, I just, I'm just super glad to be here. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, we'll turn real quickly to Exodus chapter number three. I want to say how good it is to be here again, but also that my wife was able to be with me today and my two children. I love it when they get to come with me. Man, it was a pretty easy little drive. So they don't get to go all the time because she'll still work back at home. But uh, I'm just glad they're here with me today. I honor the Lord, the presence of the Lord that's in the house today. Amen. And I am just so thankful and I honor each and every one of you for being here today and going to get to listen to me. Amen. We're going to make it through. Exodus chapter number three. Uh, If you've got it, would you say amen? We're going to read verses number 11 and verse number 12. And Moses said unto God, who am I? that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. For just the next few moments this morning, I don't intend on being very long, but I do feel a direct Direction from the Lord this morning. I want to preach. It's not who am I, it's who He is. It's not who am I, but it's who He is. And man, if you set your Bibles down next to you, if you lift your hands and your voices with me one more time this morning, let's go before the Lord in prayer and ask Him to move just like He wants to. God, we love you. We praise you today. Lord, we come to you today giving you all the glory and all of the honor. Jesus, we pray that your anointing would settle down in this house again on each and every one of us today. That your word would come forth in such a special and supernatural way. That our hearts would be ready to receive your word today. That our ears would be open to hear what you have to say to us today. God, we love you. We praise you. And God, I thank you in advance today for what you're going to do in this house, uh, Jesus. And we pray all of these things in your wonderful name. Uh, Amen. That sounds good. Could you put your hands together one more time before you're seated today? Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. Amen. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. you will just stick with me for just a minute I'm gonna read X I'm gonna back up just a little bit read Exodus chapter number two we're gonna read verses 1 through 25 but it's for a good reason and there went a man out of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi and the woman conceived and bare a son and when she saw him that he was a goodly child she hid him three months And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the riverbank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river and her maidens walked along the riverside And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. When she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister unto Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me. And I, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew. She brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And 
She called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens and spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and he hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men, the Hebrews, strove together. And he said to him, did he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as, he, as thou killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian. He sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and filled their troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them, and he watered their flock. And when they came to Riel, the father, he said, How is it that ye are soon, so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipphira his daughter. She bare him a son, and he called his name Gresham. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning. And God remembered His covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Amen. We read all that today to understand that Moses went through quite a bit to get to where he was. There was a lot that took place. There was a lot that went on to get Moses to the place to be in Midian. Sitting at the well that day and running into the seven daughters. It took a lot to get there. And a lot had come to pass. But we go back to our text today. We're going to read Exodus 1-10. through now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Here am I. Excuse me. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land, unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, Unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Preserites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Like we read in our text today, verse number 11. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? 
he asked a question. Who am I? That I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. God says, certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say to them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. I start today by the same question that Moses asked in who am I? Moses is asking God that's speaking to him through the burning bush in the backside of the desert. Who am I? Do you not know what I've been through? Do you not know what it took for me to get to this place? Do you not realize that I had to flee Egypt for my life? Do you not understand uh, that the reason I'm here in the backside of this desert is so that I would never have to go back to Egypt again. Uh, do you understand that I, I've got a family now? I've got a wife. I've got a son. Uh, I, I've got a lot of good things going on for me here. Uh, and I don't have to worry about Egypt. And I don't have to worry about my life. Who am I that I should go back to Egypt? Who am I? And we read in verse number 12 that it's not really the answer that I would have thought when Moses asked, who am I, that he would have gotten. But God says, certainly I will be with thee. Certainly I will be with thee. And if it were me in Moses' shoes, well, he wasn't wearing shoes. But if I was in the place where Moses was at, I'd be wondering, well, when? How are you going to be with me until the moment I die? Are you going to be with me till the moment it's all over? Certainly you'll be with me, but but I want to know what the end of that's going to be. And he said, this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. And he says, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Notice it says when, it didn't say if. He didn't say if, if you complete this goal and you complete this task, uh, this will be a token unto you and, and you will serve God upon this mountain. No. God said, when you bring the people out of Egypt, uh, when you bring the people out of Egypt, uh, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Certainly, I will be with thee. But Moses is wondering, okay, well, when I get there, what do I tell him? If I say the God of your fathers have sent me, they're going to ask, what is his name? Just like we read, God tells Moses, I am that I am. Tell them the I am sent you. Tell them the I am sent you. Verse number 15 in Exodus 3, And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Moses has got all the information now. He's been told what to say, he's been told what to do, and he's been told where to go. But Moses is probably still wondering, why me? Why is it that God would show up in a burning bush on the back side of the desert and tell me that I'm the one that needs to go? The one who probably shouldn't go back to Egypt. Yet like we read, the king that was there when Moses did that has died. But I'm sure they still know who Moses is. They still know who Moses is and they still understand what he did. And they still understand where he went and why he ran. Moses is asking, what do I have to offer? I don't have what it takes to do that. Who am I to even be considered to do that? 
because he knows in his mind I killed the taskmaster trying to run for my life, but even that, when I ran for my life, I left my brethren there to endure the bondage of Egypt. I left them high and dry. I left them there to suffer. But all those questions with Moses looking for his identity. Who am I? Moses is trying to figure out what in the world do I have to do with this situation and why did you come all the way here? Is there not somebody else that you could find? Is there not somebody else that you could ask? Is there not somebody else that, that doesn't have the name Moses that nobody would know that he could just walk right into Egypt? Because Moses wondering, if, if I even get through the gates of Egypt, how am I going to get an audience with Pharaoh himself? How am I going to get into the courts of Pharaoh to look at him in the eyes and say, let God's people go? How am I even going to get there? Moses is trying to figure out why me. Moses is trying to figure out just like he asked, who am I? What do I have to offer? But in all of these questions, Moses is looking for his identity. God answers his question. And it's not, certainly I will be with thee. At first, when I began to read this, I, I thought that would have been the answer. Certainly I will be with thee. But just like we read, and we go down just a little bit farther, tell him the I am that I am hath sent you. And I believe that it was God trying to say and tell Moses, it's not your identity that matters. It's not you that means anything. Uh, us sitting in this house today uh, without God don't amount to anything. Uh, but when God told Moses, tell him uh, the I am uh, that the I am hath sent you. Uh, he was telling Moses, don't you go in your name, uh, but go in my name. Uh, don't go with your identity, uh, but go in my identity. Uh, and I will take care of you. Uh, and uh, certainly I will be with thee. Jesus is saying, you don't have to worry. You don't have to, you don't have to even make a plan. You do what I said. You walk into the courts of Pharaoh. You look him in the eye and you say, let my people go. You do those things and certainly I will be with you. But I'm telling you, Moses, don't go in your name. But get my identity on you today and go in my name. We're a blessed people today. Because Moses had to ask, uh, what, they will ask me, what is your name? And he had said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. He had to go then. He had to go with that. Uh, but us today, uh, we are blessed because we get to go in the name of Jesus. Uh, we get to actually go uh, in the only saving name. Uh, we get to go uh, and do the things that God has called us to do uh, in the name uh, of Jesus. As I was praying for this service and trying to prepare, and I'm just flipping through everything, trying to get something together, praying, God, help me. Just all the things that you do to prepare for a service. It was just instant that when I came to this, that God said, this is the message I want you to preach. And I feel my help coming on, and I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Because there's somebody sitting under the sound of my voice today that might just be sitting and asking, who am I to do the things that God has asked me to do? Uh, who am I? Uh, who are we uh, as a church today uh, to be in Old Mulgee, Oklahoma and say let there be revival? Who are we as a church today? Because that's what the devil's trying to do. Uh, we're living in the last days and he's going to do everything uh, that he can to try to convince us uh, to just sit back uh, and take a breath. He's going to do everything that he can uh, to try to convince us uh, to ask the question of who am I uh, when we're at the grocery store and we feel to talk to somebody. Uh, he's going to say, who are you uh, to go up to them and say, hey, uh, why don't you come to church with me today? Uh, I'm telling you, this is what I feel in my heart today. Uh, and I hope I'm resonating with somebody. Uh, but there is a special plan. I don't say this today. 
because I'm trying to get brownie points. I'm not trying to get this, say this today to get a reaction. That's not who I am and that's not how I do things. Uh, but I'm telling you today, uh, it was last night. Uh, I was in my office floor at home uh, and I'm crying uh, because I can feel such a burden uh, and I could feel such a calling uh, for this church here today. Uh, I'm telling you, God's got a special plan uh, for this church. Uh, he's got a special plan uh, for these people today. And I can't get it off of me. Just as I stand in front of you today, my spirit is shaking because the overflowing power of Jesus that I feel in the sanctuary, just the pure expectation I have and what I feel ever since I walked in the doors this morning, I've just felt a bubbling in my spirit and I felt that God wants to do something here. And I can understand. And I can imagine sometimes it feels just like Moses did when God said go to Egypt and tell him to let my people go. When we walk into the grocery store and we see somebody... When we're walking out of the gas station, we see somebody, uh, maybe a backslider, maybe somebody that looks like they, should, they could really use some Jesus, uh, which if they're not in the church, they could really use some Jesus. Uh, maybe hard to say. How am I going to walk out into this world? How, with all the things that I've done, with all the things that I've experienced, uh, man, I, I'm, just, I'm just thankful that God had enough mercy on me to put me in the church uh, and to save me uh, and to save my family. Uh, I've been there. I've thought those thoughts. Uh, but I'm here to tell somebody today, uh, if he can do it for me, uh, he can do it for you. Uh, if he can do it for you, uh, he can do it for all the people in this city. Uh, he can do it for the people here in this city. And it may be hard uh, to try to think of something to say. Uh, but just like God said to Moses, certainly I will be with thee. Uh, certainly I will be with thee. Uh, he'll lead you. Uh, he'll guide you. Uh, he'll take you to where you need to go. Uh, he won't leave you hanging. With God's perfect plan comes perfect direction. I believe those two things work exactly together. And when you don't feel like you've got perfect direction, that's where your faith comes in. And that's when the perfect direction comes in. You're wondering, what are we going to do? What are we going to say? How are we going to reach people? You just go. You just go and you do what God has asked you to do. You just go. And just like Moses, you walk into Egypt. And you say, let my people go. And even though hey, Pharaoh said no, God knew that was going to happen. God knew that was going to happen. And God said he was going to harden Pharaoh's heart. But I come today saying with someone out there, when a lost soul tells you no, God doesn't harden hearts. He softens hearts. He softens a heart. And you go again and say, hey, you're still welcome. You're still invited. You're still, you're still worthy to come. There's nothing too big that God cannot take care of. There's nothing too big that God cannot do. He can, he can save you. He can save your family. You can get the Holy Ghost. You can be baptized in Jesus' name. As I usually do, I've gotten a little bit ahead of myself. But God is calling a people. God is calling a church. God is asking, would you go into Egypt? Would you go and reach out to my people? Would you go and do the things which I have asked you to do? And I can feel it in my spirit today that some would ask of who am I? What do I have to offer? What do I have to say? And this message is not just for those that have sit on these pews for many, many years, but this message is also for those uh, that may have just been here just a little while. God is no respecter of persons. But if you're under the sound of my voice today, if you, if you call this church home, this message is for you today. Because God is calling a church. More so, even though it's what my heartbeat is to reach out to those that are lost and in this world, God is really here to talk to the church today. 
God is really here to minister to this house today uh, and tell you that you do have what it takes uh, to do what He's called you to do. Uh, you are the people. You're still the church. Uh, you're still the tabernacle of this city. Uh, you're still the lighthouse uh, sitting on a hill uh, in a dark time. Uh, you're still the church. Uh, you're still the place. Come on, we've got to believe that today. Uh, hey man, when I drove in here, uh, I looked around and could see all the different churches. Uh, but let me tell you something. They don't offer what we offer. They don't have uh, what we have. Uh, they don't have truth. Uh, they don't have the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm telling somebody today, uh, this is the church for this city. This is the church uh, for this city. Some of us ask, who am I? That's why I read Exodus chapter number 2, 1 through 25. I led through all of Moses' story. From being born when Pharaoh was saying, throw all the male Hebrew children into the river. Let's get rid of them. I don't want to take a chance. They're growing and populating faster than we are. And they're the ones in oppression. They're the ones that we have enslaved but yet they were growing faster than Egypt was. So his mother saw he was a goodly child and builds an ark, builds a little boat, puts him in the river, puts him in the ark, puts him in the river. She had hid him as long as she could. She had done everything that she knew to do to try to keep Moses out of the hand of the Egyptians. Say, this is all I've got left. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put him in this river and see what God will do. Pharaoh's daughter finds him, picks him up, has compassion. Has compassion. This is one of the Hebrews' sons. She knew. She knew where he belonged. She knew the people he was of, but yet she still had compassion. Moses' sister says, would I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Sounds like a good idea. Go and get her. Sure enough, Moses put back into the arms of his very own mother. That's how my God works. That's how my God works. <sighs> Moses is weaned, and he's taken back to the house of Pharaoh. And he's lived all this time. And then as we read, he killed the taskmaster and he fled. Went to Midian. And we get back to the backside of the desert. When Moses asked the question of who am I, he should have known the answer. He should have known the answer. All the way back from the beginning. Because I'm sure he was told the story of how he was placed in the river. That's why he was named Moses, because I drew him out of the water. He knew his story. He knew everything that it took to get to where he was. The good, the bad, and the ugly. He should have known who am I. When God said, I've brought you here to this place. I've brought you all the way here so that I could ask you, so that I could tell you rather, go into Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. It's just the same for us today as we sit on a church pew and we wonder, what do I have to offer to the kingdom of God? I, I don't sing on the platform. I don't play an instrument. Uh, I don't preach. I don't do any of that. Uh, what do I have to offer the kingdom of God? Who am I? Well, God says, you're the one uh, that I died for. You're the one uh, that I filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're the one uh, that was washed away uh, by the power of my name uh, when you went down uh, in baptism. Uh, amen. We've got a lot better than Moses did uh, because we have a Savior that paid the ultimate price for us. Uh, we've got a little bit better thing to hold on to to say, yeah, we've got a little bit of reason uh, that God would say, uh, I want to use you uh, because he's done all of these things for us. 
us and he's put us in a perfect place to be used. And that's why we sit here in this house today with a young preacher trying to bear his heart today and saying, God has got a plan for this church. That God has a plan for each and every person sitting in this house. He wants to fill this house up. Every one of these empty seats we see, He wants to fill up. And this is everywhere. I say this at home too. We've got a few empty seats at home we're trying to fill. But he wants to do it here. And he wants to use us to do it. He wants to pull us up out of this world. So that he can use us to fill this house. So there that it can all happen again. And he can raise them up. And then they'll go out and reach again. But we've got to strip off everything that's our identity. We've just got to let it go. Coming to the house of God, we've got to know and understand it's not about us. And I could go so far to say it's not about what we've got going on either. It's not about the issues we've got going on, even though God knows what they are. But He'll take care of them. If I remember right, it's just like Moses said, I'm not a good speaker. I have a stutter. My tongue is tied. I said, you're not getting out of this one. And he gave him everything he needed to do what God needed him to do. He gave him everything he would ever need so that Moses could have no excuse to get out of what God wanted to do with him. All the way to the end of this portion of this story, when they get to the Red Sea, God's going to make a way. Just like he let them walk over on dry ground. He's going to let you walk to your calling on dry ground just as well. Psalms 37 and 25 I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. John 14 and 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Deuteronomy 31 and 6, be strong and of good courage, fear not nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, He is it thou doest go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Somebody needs to hear that today. He's not going to fail you. He's not going to leave you hanging. He's not going to let you go. He's not going to let you get out into the city. He's not going to let you get into mid-conversation with somebody and just let you go and leave you on your own. Hallelujah. He's not going to leave your family in the, in, in the, in the midst of this world. But He's going to bring you into this house and He's going to give them that divine direction we were talking about earlier. He will never fail you. And surely He will be with thee. Surely he will do it. Surely he will be with thee. I'm wrapping this thing up today. And I told you I wouldn't preach very long. But I'm going to take a few minutes here because I'm really trying to reach for somebody today. You have what it takes. Just enough of God going to the cross for you, you have what it takes. This church has what it takes. Reach every person that I saw on that list today. 
I felt a witness of the Holy Ghost when, that li- when I looked over and saw that list. This church has what it takes and has been divinely placed for such a time as this. And each person under the sound of my voice today, you're here not by mistake. God was always with Moses. God's always been with you. God was always with Moses from beginning to very end. And He's always been with you and He'll continue to be with you until He takes you home. Moses was worried about the identity that he had created for himself. He was worried about all the things that he had done. He was worried about what the people of Egypt would remember. He was worried. What are they going to think when I get there? What are they going to say to me when I walk through the gates of Egypt? He was so wrapped up in what he had going on that he had forgotten from the very beginning when he was put in that basket and floated on the side of that river. And just like Moses today, we can't get so wrapped up with what we've got going on. We can't get so wrapped up with what we've got going on at home or, or in, our, in our heads or at work or just trying to figure us out. I'm a human. I know what it's like trying to figure out what's going to happen next and how we're going to make all this work. But I've become too busy to realize that it's not about who I am, but it's about who He is. It's not about what I can offer, but it's about what He wants to do in me and through me. That it's not about what what I can do to make anything better, but it's what what am I going to do when times get tough? Uh, Am I going to call on the name of the Lord? Uh, Am I going to humble myself and pray? What am I going to do? God has a plan. You'll stand with me today. God has a plan. I can't say it enough today of what I feel in my spirit. That this city and all the things that this church endures because of this city. I know just a little, but I still know you're the light on the hill. The darkness that covers this city, it's still no match for the light that comes out of this church house. It's still no match for the light that dwells in you. It's amazing to think that all the things that are going on in this world, that one person can walk out in this city and be a light. One person. When Moses strolled up into Egypt, a nation. And he was the light. What can a church do in a city? What can this church do in this city? When just a little group of people went to a nation and said, let my people go. What could a church do that would pray that same thing That same thing. Let my people go. What would happen? God has a plan. And if we can just begin to take everything apart and get down to the very, very, very center of it all. And make sure it's about Him. 
Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. There is no telling what God would do. Lives He would change. People being healed. People being set free. I open the altars of this church today. You'll have to forgive me because I don't know how it all goes at the end of service. But I would that somebody would step out and say, I'll go. Somebody would step out today and say, I'll let my identity go. But I'll come to the front, God, so that I can put your identity on. That's it. This is what it's like to step out in faith. This altar call is just going to be a little bit different. Because though that... God can fix some things today. This altar call is about God calling a church into a city. And God asking, will you let me use you? Will you let me guide you? Will you let the I am become the one that leads and guides you today. Amen. Can we all lift our hands in this house today? Each and every one of us.